Now we're saying uh, question number 13. A hypothetical atom has only four distinct energy states. Assuming all transitions are possible, how many spectral lines can this atom produce? So basically, the problem tells us that we have four energy states. So n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4. So let's draw the radius um, of the n equals 1 orbit. Then we have n equals 2. n equals 3 and then n equals 4. So we know from um, physics that when an, uh, the higher the n number, the higher the energy state of the electron. When the electron jumps from a higher energy down to a lower energy, it releases a photon of light and it gives you a certain spectral line. If that spectral line is in the visible spectrum, then we can see it as a visible light wave. So we can see it either as red, we can see it as uh, yellow, green, or whatever. For hydrogen, it gives you a typical four lines that are visible. We call those the bomber lines. Bomber lines. Okay, they are four of them. And then other atoms have other spectral lines that they give you, and uh, sometimes it's uh, more, sometimes it's less. Now, this problem is not saying how many visible spectral lines can this atom produce. We do not have enough information to solve that problem because we are not given its energy states. So we don't know whether these lines are visible or not. We just have to count how many possible transitions the electron can make. So he could go from the n equals 2 state down to the n equals 1 state. So that's one jump right there. Okay? So let's count that. That's one jump. He can't go from n equals 1 to the, pro, uh, to the nucleus because that's it. The, the electron has to be in the n equals 1 state, right? Can't go even closer to the proton. How about from the n equals 3 state down to the n equals 1? Okay? So that's the, we can call that 2. How about the n equals 4 down to the n equals 1? That's the third possible jump. Okay, is that it? Just 3? Okay, how about from the jump from 3 to 2? 3 to 2. Okay, so that's the fourth possible jump. Okay. Is there any more? 3 to 2, uh, 3 to 1, we covered that. How about 4 to the second one? See, we went from 4 to the first, so we got to go from 4 to number 2, right? So that's the fifth possible jump. And then we got to go 4 to 3, okay? So that's going to be uh, the sixth possible jump. Okay, so basically, how can we do this? Well, the quick way of doing it is to say, uh, for to um, uh, all of the jumps where you end up at the n equals 1 state. So 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 4 to 1. Okay, that was 3. Then you go um, 3 to 2, 4 to 2, all of the jumps where you end up at the second level, 3 to 2, 4 to 2, and then the last jump is from 4 to 3. So actually, if you um, think about it, it, this ends up being a factorial, right? N minus 1 factorial. That's the different possible jumps you can have, right? What is N? In this case, it's 4. 4 minus 1 factorial. Well, that's 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2 times 1, right? Why is that? Well, 3 is the 3 possible jumps that you end up at the N equals 1 state. 2 is 2 possible jumps where you end up at the n equals 2 state. 1 is 1 possible jump that you end up at the uh, 3 state. So this is 6. So the choice here is B. Okay? 6 possible jumps. We don't know whether these are visible or not yet. Okay? These are, this is called, by the way, an emission spectrum. Emission. We know from astronomy that gases... Uh, cool gases in outer space give you emission spectrum, okay? The opposite of this is called absorption spectrum. 
and stars give you absorption spectrum. The way that that works is that the core of the star radiates in all possible wavelengths, and then the atmosphere of the star absorbs that spectrum. So what ends up happening is the opposite of this. The electron absorbs the energy of the core of the star, and it jumps to the second state, or it jumps from n equals one to three, or one to four, okay? So when the electron absorbs that energy, we end up seeing a missing wavelength. All of the wavelengths are visible except for certain wavelengths. And that is known as absorption spectrum. Absorption spectrum. And that is given off by stars. Emission spectrum is given off by gases. Uh, we usually call them cool and tenuous gases that are not very dense, okay? So I'm giving you a little bit of uh, astronomy there. So in this case, the answer was six, okay? Thank you very much.